No, we're not doing that. Let me explain something to you. We don't do we don't celebrate days or say, oh, it's it's Monday. You know, it's Monday. We're getting started from the weekend. Then by the middle of the week, we're almost there. We're almost it's Friday. Oh, we're Friday. Does anyone not notice that it's just happening over and over again? I mean, if you're if you can't wait till Friday and you haven't figured out then 48 hours, it's Monday again. I mean, you got to you got to enjoy your week. You know, then you're in the wrong you're in the wrong profession. What was the question? Steve Wonder here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to go over how to transition your traditional group policies to Microsoft Intune policies. And we're going to look at the analytics tool and best practices for using it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, in that case, I had a I had a plain bagel, some some butter, butter spread. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so in our Cloud Native series, one of the issues that came up was talking about how to get from group policy to Microsoft Intune CSPs. Well, instead of being here in the lab, I'm gonna show you my domain. Yes, I actually do have one, I just keep it secret. So, the first thing we have to do is we have to look at our group policies. Now, this is gonna vary depending on how many policies you actually have. So. Uh, what I did is I just took this one uh, default settings GPO. And uh, if we want to look at it, oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, settings. There's quite a bit in here. Um, you know, I have some basic stuff like computer settings and BitLocker and some Windows update stuff. But what we want to do is we want to kind of get this into the uh, group policy analytics tool, which will tell us which policies here are compatible with Intune and what those settings are. But let's kind of go through the best way to approach this, right? So I have to hit, uh, I have to right click on that policy. And what we want to do is we want to hit backup. And right, why don't we put this right on the desktop for now? Right, so if we open this up, we're going to see a few things. We really just want this GP report uh, XML file. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to get it over to our uh, lab where I can access uh, Intune. So just give me a minute. And like magic, we have the GP report. Let's put that on the desktop. All right, head over to Intune. Now, for every group policy object you have, you're going to have to do this. So I'm only going to do one, uh, but it'll give you the idea. So we go to devices and we're going to look for group policy analytics. And let's click there so we can get started. I can't stress enough the term analytics. For the first 18 months that this thing existed, it didn't have a migrate button. It just had it. The purpose was to analyze, to look at your policy, to see what was supported, to see where the corresponding settings were. We don't want to jump to migrate, and I'm going to explain why, but I just want to put that out there. So here's the report. It shouldn't come back with anything. I don't believe I have anything in here. No, I don't. So we have to go to import, and we are going to grab that file. Uh, GP report. Great. Let's hit next and create. All right. So. It looks like it didn't necessarily go through everything yet. Unknown settings view, targeted in AD. Let's click on the percentage number. So this is the actual report. And uh, what we want to look at here is specifically uh, what's supported, what's not. We don't want to hit migrate again right away. We want to look at everything. So let's talk about how the report works. The first thing you see is the setting name. Okay, so as far as the setting name goes, it's the name of the setting, allow cloud search, right? Um, allow Cortana. The category of that group policy setting is Windows components, search. Now when they say setting category, they are referring to, back in the server here, if we were to go edit this, they're referring to a standard, you know, when you look up here and you go to policies, administrative templates, Windows compo components, and uh, search. So that's what they're referring to so that you know kind of where the policy is. MDM support. Is it native and in tune? Yes. Great. What's the value we have it set for in uh, the original policy? Disabled. What's our scope? Because of course there are two scopes. 
in uh, group policy, just like modern policy, you have computer and user, device, user, device, minimum OS version, pretty standard. The CSP name is policy. Most of these will be policy, but here's what's really important. The CSP mapping. So if we were to look at this, let's actually just copy that, pull it up in a notepad so we can read it a little easier. Okay. Device, vendor, Microsoft policy, config, search, allow cloud search. Okay, well, that's great. Um, and I could migrate it, but it's very important to understand also where it is, right? So in a lot of these, let me open up a new Intune tab, actually. So these could be set a few different ways, right? So in devices, Windows, if I go to configuration profiles and create, the easiest place I'm going to find this is in the settings catalog. Test. Now nine times out of 10, I could just search for my setting. So I can say allow for Tana. And you can see it took me to that search category and there it is. Um, if I want to look for another one, allow cloud search, same thing. There it is. And it's going to give me the information about it, right? Just allow me to search, you know, OneDrive, SharePoint, all that stuff. Um, and then I have my setting. So that's an easy way to look for it. Uh, if you've been using Intune for a while, then you'll know a lot of these are also available in the templates. So when I go to Windows 10 and later, you know, the templates were here for quite some time. And when I click on like device restrictions, I could find a good deal of this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. We don't need to save that. If I look for cloud and storage, it's just a little harder to, it's a general, right? They snuck Cortana in here, Cortana. I don't believe you'll find cloud search in here, right? So you don't have to go hunting for this, but just know that if you've had Intune for some time and you've been using these templates, they, they already might be here, right? So just something to be aware of, right? If we start running into policy conflict. So if I'm really just concerned with the ones that aren't compatible, I can filter this by support. So it looks like I have two policies um, that are not supported. And let's see why. Allow secure boot for integrity validation. But is that really not supported? And we can go back and look at that policy and read it a little bit better. If you enable or do not configure this policy setting, BitLocker will use secure boot for platform integrity if the platform is capable of secure boot based integrity validations. So if you look at this policy, it's assuming the device has secure boot enable and from there it will use secure boot to check the integrity. Well, what does that mean for us up here? Well, we're actually looking in the wrong place. So up here in a cloud native device, we're looking at compliance. And that's really what we want here. So if I were to create a, actually I already have one, See, I have this Win 10 11 disk encryption policy. And if we want to look at it, um, let's actually go to systems, compliance settings. We're going to hit edit. If we want to go to device health, look at this, secure boot, code integrity, right? I can turn these on here and require that secure boot be used to check this. And that'll come back to me in compliance. So in this case, it wasn't, uh, you know, we're, we're taking device management and group policy and melding them. So this specific policy, even though it's not compatible, right? It's because there's a different method to do it in a cloud uh, native, P, you know, cloud native world. It's not as simple as saying, oh, well, this doesn't work anymore. So something to be aware of. Let's look at the other one. Select when preview builds and feature updates are received and how many days a feature update is released, would you like to defer? Well, why did this come back not compatible? Because we know this is the case, right? Because we have Windows feature updates. We have these, right? I have uh, deferrals here. I can do feature deferral, quality deferral. And on my pilot ring, I even have preview releases turned on. You know, we just did this a few weeks ago. So there you go, servicing channel, beta channel. If I open it up, yep. We have the pre-release 
beta channel here. We can do insider release preview. So we can control this. So why did that come back bad? Well, because it's a different mechanism. It's not a one-to-one -one of the policy, right? The feature updates have a different backend. You know, some of the policies have this CSP mapping, which ends up being literally the same pretty much translation. And these just happen not to. So if I feel good about this and everything else that's here, um, those are two very important examples to show you that just because a policy isn't supported doesn't mean the thing you're trying to do isn't supported, right? There's just a different way to do it, which is why it's so helpful to you know work with a partner if you're unsure about doing this or a consultant or someone who's done it a bunch to guide you through it so that it doesn't seem like you're just going to miss out on policies and then security gets upset, all that stuff. So let's say I do want to migrate these. What would that look like as opposed to going through and hunting down the right settings. Well, let's take a look at that together. I'm going to hit migrate. And what I can do is I can select all the settings and it automatically doesn't do the ones that aren't compatible, obviously. So it lets me know what I have. And I can give this a name. So I'm going to say um, imported from GPO. Default uh, PC settings that were imported from, and it's probably a good idea to put the name of the policy. So in my case, this was taken from default settings GPO. From default settings GPO. Okay, I'm not gonna assign it. I just wanna import it and let's watch that happen. Well, it says it's there. Let's go hunting for it. Oh, I see it imported from GPO. So what it did, which is actually really helpful, is it literally just created um, a settings catalog for me. So I can open each one and it pretty much has the exact settings as were there. I had the WinRM service on, but I didn't have the, the filter. So it copied that. It took my BitLocker settings. It took my allowing the camera, not allowed. So this is pretty good. And it's a good way to allow you to go through and, uh, you know, kind of see how it did. So having the settings catalog there is good. Now, obviously, if I were to go apply this now, I, I may run into some conflict with existing things, but uh, that's a topic for another time. Obviously, in going from traditionally managed to cloud managed devices, you know, this is a great boon to have, right? The fact that you can just take a look at what it is and import it. Um, I'm not against it. I'm against blindly migrating. So if you see what we did there, we kind of just took a look, right? We took our time and we went through what wasn't supported versus what was supported. And we went from there. So how to use the tool, how to kind of navigate around the report it gives you, and then how to make the right decisions. In this case, if I don't already have policy, I, I migrate. I have the settings catalog, I'm in good shape. Um, obviously these become more complicated as you go through and you have larger policies and more complex assignments. But again, that's why it's important to, uh, you know, take your time, uh, you know, and, and work through this. So that's going to be it for today. Let me know how you do with this. Hop in the discord. I, I always like hearing the, the approach folks take and uh, we'll be seeing you.